while the watch bros scrambled to jump on the bandwagon and review the insignificant and uninteresting Invicta 1953 Rolex homage, I was working on the real scoop, the Technomarine Manta. The Manta is a 200 meter dive style watch with a screw down crown and a sapphire crystal for about $80 with shipping. The Technomarine may not have its name garishly carved into the side of its case like the Invicta Yachtmaster homage that I reviewed last year, but it has Invicta DNA all over it, from the box to the product branding to the clasp to the crown action. It's a Technomarine in name only. When I saw the Invicta specs for the Manta describing its crystal as being sapphire, I suspected this wasn't true. First, I'll do some baseline tests to make sure my crystal hardness tester is working correctly. First, I'll test my Seiko 5 Sports. It has a Hardlex crystal, which registers one bar, as it should. Now, I'll test a Sapphire crystal, Casio Edifice, for $102 that I reviewed recently. It registers an astounding seven bars. Definitely Sapphire Crystal. Now I'll test the Manta. Eight bars. I've never owned a watch that registered eight bars. I'll test the magnifier now. Six bars. Pretty good. Is the Manta Sapphire Crystal? Yes, the Manta is definitely Sapphire Crystal. The Manta comes in a small leaning, medium sized, sturdy cardboard box. It comes with a water resistance instruction card and a generic user's manual, which describes its fairly generous three year warranty. The Manta isn't a real dive watch because it lacks a loom pip. It doesn't even give you a triangle at the zero position to help guide your eye, which is a little annoying. I'd say the Manta is a medium sized watch. Its diameter is 42 and a half millimeters. To give you some perspective, I'm comparing the Manta to the Psycho 5 Sports, which has a slightly bigger 43 millimeter diameter. Though the Manta looks bigger and wears bigger because it's longer. The Manta's lug to lug width is 50 and a half millimeters. 48 millimeters used to be the de facto lug to lug width limit. Unfortunately for men like me who'd prefer to wear smaller watches, 51 millimeters lug to lug seems to be becoming the new 48 millimeters. The Manta uses a derivative case design. I'm not sure whether the case design is derived from a Rolex or a Tudor, nor frankly do I care, as I find copying high-end dive watches very banal and boring. The case's lugs curve down a little at the end, but I wouldn't call it ergonomic. The Manta's case back protrudes well beyond the lugs. This protrusion is the only thing that comes into contact with your wrist as you wear the watch, and there are big gaps between your wrist and the lugs. This may not work for everyone, but I find it pretty comfortable. The 22 millimeter bracelet tapers down to 20 millimeters. It doesn't feel overly bulky, and I only get minimal constriction when I bend my wrist forward. The bracelet feels pretty smooth and comfortable as well. I've worn watches the size of the Manta that are more comfortable, but the Manta is reasonably comfortable and I could wear it all day and all night. The Manta uses a low profile friction clasp. I'm pretty sure it's the same clasp that the Invicta Seawolf that won my 2019 Watch of the Year award used. I really don't like the clasp. If you've just cut your nails, you're going to have a real challenge opening the clasp as there's so little room to dig your thumb in. My biggest issue with the clasp is its sharp edge. Because its edge isn't straight, it's especially jagged and nasty. People have a much greater tolerance for sharp edged clasps than I do. And I've reviewed on this channel sharp edge clasps on watches exceeding $500. Still, the other big watch companies are getting their acts together and smoothing even their cheapest clasps. The Manta is made of stainless steel. The Manta has a mixture of both brushed and polished surfaces. Polishing a cheap watch to make it look expensive makes it really stand out as being cheap. All this polish isn't fooling anyone, at least anyone with any taste. 
The end links are hollow, but they're placed in the case pretty seamlessly. I like that the end link pivots as well. The case thickness is 13.5 millimeters, which is fine for this type of watch. The crown is nicely signed and its knurling is fine. There's not a big crown pop, though I can feel a discernible vacuum seal being released when I unscrew the crown. The stem has decent thickness and little wobble. The crown action is poor and not very responsive, though it does the job. I'm still not entirely sure whether the logo on the case back display is on a sticker or not. I tried to peel it off but stopped when it didn't seem to want to come off, as I didn't want to damage the watch if it wasn't in fact a sticker. Even if it is a sticker, the undecorated movement isn't much to look at. Invicta lists the movement in the specs as being a Miyota 821A. Miyota is a respected Japanese movement maker, owned by Citizen Watch. Spec-wise, the Miyota 821A is similar to the Seiko NH36. The 821A has 21 joules, a 42-hour power supply, and runs at 21,600 beats per hour. It has an accuracy rating of between 20 seconds slow a day and 40 seconds fast a day. Older entry-level Miyota movements had a reputation for having rattly, noisy rotors. This rotor is not rattly. This movement hacks and hand winds. From what I read about the Miyota 821A on the Caliber Corner website, not all Miyota 821As hack, only the newer ones. If this is accurate, then it would be incredibly sleazy of Citizen Watch to add this important hacking feature without changing the model number of the movement, as it unfairly punishes those who are not lucky enough to get a new model. I suspect that Invicta has a new hacking batch of 821As for its Manta, but because of the mystery meat element of the 821A, one cannot tell for sure if he or she is going to get one that hacks. This Manta is running 11 seconds fast in the horizontal position and perfectly in the vertical position. The crystal is flat and raised over the bezel. There's no anti-reflective coating. The crystal's magnifier is aligned poorly with the watch's date. While the magnifier magnifies the date enough to be readable, it should have been magnified so that the date fills up the entire area of the magnifier. I have discussed the issue that I'm going to discuss now in my prior review of the Invicta Yachtmaster homage. So I'm not going to beat this issue to death, but I will point out that the Manta's dial has too many logos. There's a Techno Marine logo acting as the counterbalance of the second hand, as well as an obnoxiously oversized Techno Marine logo acting as the 12 o'clock index. The second hand is so thin that it could be better described as a needle. I don't like this thinness. I like the shape of the other hands. I'm just not so crazy about their chrome-like polish, as it makes the hands look cheap. I really like the Manta shark teeth indexes, and they have good depth as well. The writing on the watch is reasonably sized. Overall, I'm very happy with the dial. The bezel is slanted downwards. Invicta doesn't say what material the bezel is made out of. I suspect it's aluminum. There are no imperfections on the markings on the bezel. The bezel is 120 click unidirectional because the bezel is tight and thin and its edge is not the smoothest in the world. Rotating this bezel by holding its edges will grate your fingers. You need to press down on the bezel's front in order to turn it. The bezel is slightly misaligned. I really like the color of the dial background, especially in natural light. It's very soothing to look at. There's a mild sunburst pattern that's pretty nice. If you look at the watch from certain angles, the dial looks slightly hazy, which is probably a byproduct of light being reflected off the sunburst, but this is within tolerable limits. The sunburst isn't overkill like it is on many cheap watches. The Manta uses push pins. I had no issues sizing the bracelet. The Manta is 156 grams, sized for my wrist, which is about 7 inches, and 170 grams, unsized. The Manta is on the light side. 
The loom of the Manta on the right is being compared to my control watch, the Seiko 5 Sports on the left. The Manta's loom is dimmer than I would like, but readable. It has good staying power. The Manta's loom was readable for at least 7 hours. For an $80 watch, this is pretty damn good. The only thing that really bugs me about the Manta is the sharpness of its clasp. Even so, you're getting a hell of a lot of watch for the money with the Manta for an insanely cheap price. You're getting a scratch-proof dial, passable loom, reasonable comfort, an attractive dial that doesn't look like a Rolex, and the water resistance of a dive watch. And if you have an issue, you can actually reach a human being at Invicta, or at least you could before the pandemic. Invicta is a real watch company. It's not run by some guy who slaps some fake name on watches he buys in bulk from some factory in China. At $80, spec-wise, the Manta is giving Chinese Rolex knockoffs made by fake Euro-sounding companies like Pagani Design and Lorio a real run for their money. If you're on a budget and looking for a robust automatic watch, I think that you're probably not going to do much better than the Manta at the sub $100 price point. Please subscribe. Please like. I'd like to thank my Patreon benefactors for donating me money so I could drink Monster Energy. I know a case of Monster Energy doesn't seem like a lot, but it means a hell of a lot to a guy who spends most of his days Instacarting and trying to make the most comprehensive watch videos on YouTube.